What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the T Flip Show. Here we are, episode seven. Man, time is just flying by. This is seven weeks gone by. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. I'm so happy to be here. But hey, I got a great episode for you guys coming out with a whole lot of content. We are interviewing Jose Cruz, not just a marathon runner, but an ultra marathon runner. Now you're asking yourself probably like, what, what Tyler? What the hell is an ultra marathon? Well, you know what? Just stick around for the video. You know, I little did I know that there's a difference between a marathon runner and ultra marathon runner. And Jose was a great guest. He, he brought us so much interesting stories and experience that he's been through. And it, it was great. It, it was something special. And I'm going to tell you real quick, no spoilers, but the very, very end of the show, you'll hear probably the most heartwarming ending we've ever had on the show. I had no idea it was going to happen until it did. And it, it was great. It was such a great note to end on. And it was a lot of fun. And Warm my heart, so I hope you guys enjoy it. And hey, right before I let you go, if you like the episode, we always ask you, you know, be a friend and tell a friend, you know. This is how this thing's going to grow. You send it to a friend and say, hey, my buddy Tyler, he's got a great show. It was a great episode. You should definitely check it out. That's how we grow. That's how we get this thing moving, and it would mean the absolute world to me. So with all that being said, I'll let you guys get right into the episode, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, all right? So I'll see you on the next one. Take care. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode seven of the T Flip Show. Joined by my good buddy Shane, as always, and then we're joined by Howdy. special guest Jose Cruz. Jose, welcome, man. Hello. How you doing? Hello, I'm doing well. I'm doing, doing well. great. Awesome. Love to hear that. <laughs> Love to hear that. So, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by our good friend Jose Cruz here. Jose is a mutual friend of mine, actually, through my girlfriend's mom co-worker nice. um and so what's cool about jose is that he'll talk about it a little bit but he is uh what you would call not just a marathon runner an ultra marathon runner like that you got to get that title right like that's a <laughs> kind of a big, big deal. difference that's a that's a hell of a title you know oh no 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 i'm not a marathon runner ultra marathon runner. there you go <laughs> but jose so i want to start really broad i want you to tell me about ultra marathon running like what is that tell me for someone who's a dummy because i'm clueless to it all right um so an ultra marathon is basically anything over the standard like 26.2 miles, which is a marathon. So anything of beyond that would be an ultra marathon. And typically races are like 50 Ks. So mm -hmm. like, um, you know, that's around 30 miles, 32 miles, 35 if you get lost, yeah. you know, 50 miles, 100 Ks, which is 62 miles, stuff like that. So ultra running and it's usually on trail and not on road. So mm -hmm. A lot of fun. I don't know why we do it, but we do it. You do it. I know. I was going to say, I know I can say at least is that I'm not a big runner. And when I had to run in middle school, high school, I'm sure Shane can relate to some extent. It's when we had to run the mile for PE, it was the worst day. Is my football coach was my PE teacher in high school. And I got to run the, you know, run the mile. And the mile was like, coach, give us a break. <laughs> Come, Come on. on. Cut us some slack. And this guy's out here running ultra marathons. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I used to like running a lot. When I was like, before I broke my leg in 2016, I used to run like three to five miles a day, oh, like yeah. pretty much every day. And like with, you know, like some good elevation too. I, I just kind of fell in love with it and I got in like really good shape and then I broke my leg and I wasn't really able to run to like maybe last year, really okay. like, like distance. Like I could run a mile, but then I can't walk the next day because my ankle's so like sore and swollen and stuff. But I did do a half marathon last year. Oh, shoot. With like pretty much zero training, like I ride bikes a lot, <laughs> yeah. and so that's like another thing I do. Yeah, I've, have I've had a streak, a streak of 589 days, I yeah. think, I think, in I a row that. of riding. Yeah, so like I'm pretty good condition wise, yeah. but like running, you know, I ran a few times like because I knew I was gonna do it. It was the SF Giants; they had the half marathon race last year. Okay. So I just went for it, and this is like really one of the questions i wanted to ask you because as i was doing it physically yeah, i was fine my legs were definitely fried at the end but like condition wise i was good like didn't really suffer but i did it an hour and 59 minutes and i was so bored like <laughs> like for me i race dirt bikes and mountain bikes so like when i'm racing for two hours i'm like i'm racing a dirt bike i'm focused like wired focus i got other people around me high speeds like there's definitely no time to like get in my head but like running like after like the first two miles, I was just bored out of my mind. Uh -huh. It's like, how do you deal with like the boredom factor and like mentally like pushing yourself to like just keep running when you have like no yeah. entertainment almost? You know, I don't, you know, it's funny at first, the reason I started running, so it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it truly like evolves to something else always. 
Yeah. So, um, a lot of times now I'm usually stuck in my head about thoughts. Maybe a lot of times it's, you know, how can I be a better person? Or I start focusing on something that I discuss with someone else. I'm like, start thinking about other ideas mm-hmm. and I bring those ideas back. So I'm usually in my head kind of talking to myself. And sometimes recently I've been listening to a lot of music. Usually don't do that. Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't know. I, I really, I'm, I'm thinking about mm-hmm. a, a good answer in yeah. terms of like, how is it that I can run this long for that mm-hmm. period of time? Because genuinely, I think that was the most difficult thing for me. Like, <laughs> like I said, like the running was like, it, you know, it got tougher yeah. when mile 13 came along. I was yeah. definitely glad I was at the end, but it was just like, just in my head, like trying to like think of stuff to do. But like, I don't know, it was just hard for me. It's a little medit. Well, now as well, it's like for me, it's more like mm-hmm. meditative. And I was actually just having this conversation with a friend not too long ago. It's like, you know, it's I was telling him how how running for me was first an outlet. You know, mm-hmm. when I was when I was younger, first it was like working out and weightlifting. And then I discovered running and it was mm-hmm. like, oh, that was my outlet. I'm going, you know, I'm running and this is like my thing that I'm doing. And then little by little, it kind of just became this thing where it was like it was very meditative where it's just like my my go to place in a way. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I was like, well, it, I so it might like sounds like it changes sometimes. Like yeah. you're doing like because for me, for racing, sometimes I'm like laser focused. Like, literally in my head, like, okay, turn in 30 feet. Okay, I got to get on this. Like, I'm just, like, playing out the race, like, what I'm going to do in my head, yeah. whatever. But then there's also sometimes, like, that's on, like, a shorter race for me. is like, two hours for yeah. motocross. But there's also oh, some en- enduro races I've done where it's, like, two-day races, like, eight hours a day. And, like, at those races, I kind of just, like, completely shut my brain off. And just, like, I'll sing, I'll sing, like, the same two lines of a song over and over in my head again <laughs> for, like, two hours. And then I'll like change the song and, or like I'll get onto something else. But like, I felt like, I don't know. It's just like, I don't have like an answer for what yeah. I do either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like just different races for different things. Well, I, I think, don't know. I think what you could connect out of those two things is that you have a meditative state when you're in your, your, your niche, right. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, for you, it's running for Shane. It's the dirt bikes, you know, but it's like you get into that headspace where you're doing what you love. Right. Yeah. So, of course, you know, you and I go on a 10-mile run. I'm not making it past two, probably. <laughs> but same thing, vice versa. If we hop on a dirt bike, you know, I don't know if I can even get the thing started, yet alone rolling. <laughs> so, so point is, it's like you get in that, that headspace, I feel like. Another thing you were talking about was getting in the zone. For me, there's definitely a difference. But, like, when you're out training, is like you could push as hard as you want when you're training. But I feel like, are you still – are you able to – reach like a race pace while you're training or is it like a it's, whole different level of pace while you're racing it's a different level of pace and you usually don't want to hit those paces all the time because mm-hmm. you will burn out yeah kind of like i mean i'm sure with sports like you know if you're lifting or something like that you yeah. will eventually burn out mm-hmm. and um so recently actually i just got a coach so shout out to megan roach i'm not sure if she's gonna watch this so megan megan roach um so i i just got on the plan uh like a few months ago and um, I've noticed improvements right away. You know, I used to hit it hard, and mm-hmm. I, you know, I did go through that burnout phase. And even I've been running for like I think nine years now, and I still hit that burnout phase. Um, but like today, I had a workout, and I I do hit certain paces, like race paces. Like you know, um, I'm training. Like my only goal this year, I usually do all these ultra marathons and like right. on trail and everything. But I've been sticking just to road mm-hmm. to be um, one of my friends is i mean i guess he's a, he's a friend old, older man but uh his name is charles and his marathon time is 236 okay um and i'm trying to beat that so that's like my only purpose this year to beat charles that's really time. impressive i mean considering <laughs> i did a marathon half marathon in just under two hours yeah. you're, well and the, you're doing double that with only yeah, an extra 30 minutes I think it's like it's like five five 57 pace yeah that's so. insane i saw your when i first i was gonna say the on instagram, instagram that, you had that 10 mile run at like a 540 pace or something 539, like 539 yeah. pace like <laughs> well, i was to like go, oh okay is it what was it is a 10 mile run 10 miles, right? right and you did it in just in an under an hour and a yeah. five like you said 539 yeah. pace yeah. which is Incredible. I, ran, I was just talking about high school again. I'm not a runner, <laughs> yeah. but I'd run a mile and I was like, oh, all right, seven minutes, 30 seconds. All right, all right, all right we're getting yeah. somewhere. And it's funny. It's, I, I did mention to my wife because, you know, on, you know, on, in, on Facebook, you get these. I'm not sure if you guys are on Facebook or whatever, but yeah, um, sometimes, you know, on there, um, you know, they have like, oh, your memory from like nine years ago right. or whatever. There was this one when I had first started off running um, where I had posted on Facebook, 
went on my first 10 mile run and I ran it in like an hour and like 48 minutes, mm -hmm. 10 mile run, an hour and 48 minutes. Now going back to this, this yeah. run that I did a few weeks ago, you know, finishing in 56 minutes and like 30 something seconds was mm -hmm. like, it's like, it's crazy so where I was to where I am mm -hmm. now. Yeah. It's cool so, to see that gain. So here's what I got to ask is it, it seems we mentioned your Instagram. It seems like you've done a lot of traveling with, mm. with, with running. You know, yeah. some people travel just solely to travel, see places and, and get drunk while doing it. You know, <laughs> that's the common stigma. But it seems with you, you've seen these beautiful, gorgeous places. Some people even dream about seeing yeah. and you've done it while doing these marathons. So tell me about that. Some of the coolest places you've been, a few yeah. call to action. I actually shout out to my wife, Roya, if you're watching this, um, <laughs> she does a whole lot of the research. And I think uh, going forward, uh, I think we said like last year or the year before the 2019, um, we had said that we were going to try to find a race, a local race everywhere we went to, no matter where it's like, we're going to find a local mm -hmm. race and run it just for fun. And so 2019, we had the chance to, uh, we were in Wales. It was a half marathon. It was out on trails. We we're out vacationing, doing all these trails out there and, and, you know, in England and yeah. we drove over to Wales. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, just seeing things and just sometimes it's like a culture shock in a way because we're so used to things here it's totally like, oh, wow like these roads are so narrow you're driving on the other side of the road right and i'm like far away from everything and yeah. everyone is white <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's so, like so name a few places that you've been to so you say wales i mean that's one it looks like you've been yeah, to far more places other yeah, than that uh, right nicaragua usually like in, or you know in idaho i think i saw something about you yeah I, I do a race in I idaho saw, i'm missing it this year because yeah. of my injury but I yeah. was doing every summer in Idaho. Idaho. So we were, we spent some time there in, uh, in Boise or Boise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, like in uh, Stanley, Idaho, we, we okay. were out there in, uh, the sawtooth mountain range out there. Mm -hmm. It was like super pretty. Yeah. We did some hikes. And I've some done some riding up there. Up there. It's, it's super really cool. Area. cool. Yeah. Um, but you know, I've, I've also done solo trips, uh, I would drive out to Montana and do races there. So that picture that you actually use is from a race called the rut and it's up in right. big sky, Montana, which right. is big sky is crazy. Gnarliest yeah. races that, 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 them, but that picture is beautiful. You yeah. sent me a couple <laughs> and it, it, it's hard to choose, but I was like, that is something else. Yeah. You know, that was super cool. I could even pull it up here yeah. uh, for them to see. But yeah. so, so actually when you're talking about how sometimes it can be boring, mm -hmm. you know, when it's, it can be a little, I guess a little boring when it's on road, but on trails, yeah. like a whole different thing. So, especially for these longer races, um, what happens is I do take little pauses mm -hmm. and kind of just enjoy it because it's like, I'm not running the whole thing, you know, yeah, super fast. Kind of slow like your pace you know, down I'm a little like bit and hiking uphill or something yeah. if it's super technical or something. But you know, sometimes you, you just take a pause and you just kind of take it in. You're like, fuck, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, and, and I think not that a whole lot of people will be out here and it's like, Oh, and yeah, that, that picture, crazy. that picture right there, it says a lot right there. You can see yeah. it right here behind you. So, <laughs> Not only is it beautiful, but I got to ask you the few, few pictures you sent me, and they don't know about them, but other than this one, <laughs> talk oh, about yeah. the hat. What's going on yeah, with I've the seen, hat? I've seen I got to ask. Does times. it make you run faster? What's that all about? <laughs> so, so the name actually Propeller Hat Man comes from my friend uh, Silvino, which I think he may be watching. Silvino, shout out, Silvino. So he's trying to mark it. Might you know? He's like, you got to mark yourself <laughs> with that hat, because um. So we all started off this hat. I bought it off. Um, uh, there was a. Down the street from where I used to live in Gilroy, there was this guy having a garage sale, sold it for a buck. And I said, oh, this is kind of funny. It was a long time ago, maybe like seven years ago, six years ago, maybe. Um, and I was like, oh, maybe I would wear this on a run, wore it on a run and uh, with a friend. And then like a week later, I wore it up to Half Dome. Uh, Roy and me hiked Half Dome or whatever. And I thought it was like, it'd be kind of like a funny thing mm -hmm. to have. And um, any, anyway, so during races, I thought, you know, sometimes people take themselves way too serious. You know, <laughs> it's like they're... It's like they're in the zone, which is cool, you know, but yeah. it's like you got to have fun out there, too. And so I kind of wanted to make people laugh with this hat. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like my thing to always wear a hat during That's the race. Cool. That's cool. There's, there's, for any racing, there's definitely always people that take it so seriously. Yeah. Like well, there's, at least with motorcycles, like there's always, I mean, I'm not going to name any names, but there's always <laughs> a couple families out there where like, they call them moto dad like mm. just crazy screaming at their kids well, it's just like stuff. the little league dads right no, it's yeah, the same, same exact idea. thing like they literally like <laughs> if their son doesn't win like they're grounded like oh shit but like i've gone out to races and i've done some some team races and stuff where i'll wear like i have a a pink alpaca onesie mm -hmm. i'll wear over my yeah, gear yeah. 
And then, like, Easter one year, I did bunny ears and stuff like that. I'm always, like, racing. Have a, I definitely want to yeah. win. Yeah. But I'm going to have a good, have a good time, time too. Well, like, you know? if, that's what we're here for because I love doing yeah. it. I don't, it doesn't need to be, like, a serious I job think, all yeah. the time. I think I didn't even know that necessarily about you even. So, you had to learn you, too, Jose. It's what, That's beyond selfless in a way if you think about it. Especially, you know, you mentioned, like, you're trying to make other people even laugh, yeah. too. You know, like, mm. see a goofy hat but, on it. But I also also become that guy who's, like, I can't. I can't let that guy with the fucking hat beat. Yeah, me. I can't, I can't <laughs> as a competitive end. Not him. <laughs> you know, I'm sure maybe people think that I don't know if that's actually true, but uh, you know, put a little target on your back. Yeah, <laughs> but it's funny. It's like um, it kind of became this thing where I where people recognize me for it. It's not like I'm popular or anything like that. But this one random time, me and a friend were uh, running up Half Dome like a few years ago, and there was this professional runner who I know and follow. And I, you know, we're like by the cables and, you know, we're, we're running up and I see this guy running down. I was like, that guy looks familiar. And as he got closer, I was like, oh shit, that's, you know, pro runner, Ricky Gates, Solomon runner, really cool dude. And he's like approaching me and he's like filming someone. And, um, yeah, I was like, oh shit, what's up, Ricky? And he was like, oh, what's up? I was like, you probably don't remember me. It's like, you might even get a picture. It's like, yeah, I know who you are, man. You're the guy with the propeller hat. Oh, I love <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, shit, he remembers me. Just recognizes you hat. for what you do. So, yeah. Yeah. What's so cool about that I, I wanted to mention is, you know, you're saying it, it's selfless. You keep it light. And I want to emphasize on that, keeping it light, you know, because for me, I recently, I, last episode, I, I picked up golf, you know, mm. and I'm super into it and I enjoy it because – for me, I transitioned from football to, you know, and then I stopped playing football and I was all about getting better, right? You yeah. know, and now I've transitioned to golf and I want to get better as well. It's recreational. I'm not signing up for tournaments or nothing. It's like so hard on myself. And I always catch myself like, why are you so mad, bro? Like, yeah. relax. You're out here. Have fun, whether it's yeah. a tournament or not, you yeah. know? And so that's what's yeah. so cool about that is you keep it light, you know, beyond yourself, but to others. You remind yourself, hey, we're here to have a good time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, That's super, super cool, Jose, yeah. that you're doing and that. So we, we talked, we've already kind of, dived into or sorry, dove into a couple things already it's so cool hearing already but let's let's slow it down let's back up a little bit so as far as what you do so you're you're beyond just a long distance runner a long distance runner but a ultra marathon runner um and a cool quote i had from you we, we chatted on the phone a little <laughs> bit before the show you said you know some people call it ultra marathon running that's the official title to me it's just running that's all it is you know <laughs> and take that as you please some people might call it cocky or you know but i think it's it's your mindset right you know it's the way that you're approaching to it yeah i think that's super super neat with what you do with it and so beyond running though you do something super super cool you told me to touch on i want you to bring it up is your uh your nonprofit that you have your race oh, director yeah. right so t tell me a little bit about your nonprofit that so, you do so it's actually it's it's pretty new to me just because well the race isn't new to me but taking over the race is new so i am the new race director for this race called the mount madonna challenge local race it's been going on it where i think it's its 45th year this year and so i think a couple of years ago there was like a rumor that's like oh we may not continue with this race we may no longer do it right and i thought oh shit like i i run this race mm -hmm. i had run it for like the the last four or five years, I was like, oh, I really love this race. And I like the, you know, I, the meaning behind it, especially just because they, they hand out, you know, um, it's a nonprofit. All proceeds go to like local scholarships. And I thought, you know what, I'd like to continue this. I contacted the old race director. I said, I'd love to do it. Took over last year. Obviously, everything was canceled. And so um, I, I didn't get to do anything, get much practice in. But now it's like I'm starting to get my feet wet a little more, so reaching out to sponsors um getting some money actually is mm -hmm. pretty cool also some local businesses it's awesome so it's pretty cool it's yeah. like all right a couple people and then i'm just waiting for the north face hopefully <laughs> north face if you're listening please <laughs> yeah we actually event. have north face and nike in, yeah. is in here too nike oh, okay yeah um, right. yeah we have some big viewers in this right. show uh -huh. <laughs> imagine <laughs> <laughs> thank you nike and no but um so you know all proceeds you know go to these local scholarships now before it used to be you know someone who like who was a standout and say like cross country, like a student, something like that, someone mm -hmm. who was a standout academically. And I thought that was really cool, but I felt like in the area where we live, maybe some people may not have the same financial like support as some of the students that maybe, or might have like my similar background. Right. And so my, my goal now, what I'm doing with this now is just kind of shifting it over and kind of making, you know, maybe helping those students instead of say that I know people may be well off. They may not need sure. the money, you know, so focusing on those kids, but yeah, it is a half marathon, 10K, 5K. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm like very happy to take it over. 
Right. So mm-hmm. anyway, so well, yeah, it's it's August yeah, twenty eighth. Cool. It's August twenty eighth. So yeah. if you know if you guys want to come out and support, that'd be really Maybe cool. We'll be out there it's, racing it's, it. It's definitely yeah. a challenge. Yeah, not me. <laughs> not me. Maybe this guy with the sling on, but I, I wouldn't stand a chance half marathon. No, I actually, I, I I do. I was thinking about this the other day, looking through your Instagram. I'm honestly, kind of inspired me. I want to get back into running. Obviously, <laughs> once I'm healed, um, because I, I saw all of your big runs and everything. But one of the things that really caught my eye and really, like. I want to do it, like get something in. I'm always doing like challenges. I don't know if you saw, like I did a day where I burned 10,000 calories. Yeah. In, in yeah, eight, I saw. In I, 18 you hours. Posted, you posted like a, yeah. a, a screenshot. So of I did or stuff like that. like that. I've done like big hundred plus mile rides, like climbing 10,000 feet on my bike really and cool. like stuff like that. But when I saw you do is you set out to do the, um, oh, I'm going Ev- blank on Everest Mount Everest challenge. challenge. Uh, yeah. yeah. I and didn't get to finish it. You didn't it. finish I, I just it, but. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to like twenty four thousand feet, 24, I think. Twenty four thousand five hundred, and I needed yeah. to get twenty nine thousand twenty nine. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that's insane. Like, <laughs> Nutty. Yeah, like, to, to like, even say, "Oh, I didn't finish it." Like that, that's so, a hell of yeah, a yeah. You were though. like sixteen hours in at that point, or yeah, something like 16 that. Sixteen hours in, I started at midnight. Thirty miles yeah, on your feet, like that. that's pretty crazy, man. <laughs> that's something special. Yeah, so, it's it's funny actually. I, um, Emmy may know the the place. So I where I live is right behind this. Uh, iconic mountain you'd call it uh um it's called toro el toro know, right yeah, 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 yeah. Know you know it's very steep it looks like a volcano face, that yeah. I, growing it's up not, i called it a volcano, volcano i so, remember so people you know usually just hike the face of it mm-hmm. you know and then come back down which is fine but i live literally on the same property on the other side so i was lucky enough to do the back side come down the front side come back the front side and then so it was just kind of like this thing just up and down mm-hmm. up and down up and over um but anyway, like I've taken people up there and in my head, you know, I've been doing this endurance, endurance sports and like a lot of hiking and all this stuff. So it's mm. like, oh, yeah, it's kind of easy. It's only half a mile. Yeah. But I've taken coworkers and friends. It's like, oh, shit, like this is hella steep. I was like, oh, yeah. damn, I, maybe I should just <laughs> slow it down. Maybe not invite people over now. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. <laughs> well, That's what's cool. funny is I was going to bring up and Emmy even just commented in the chat talking about it was is that she says she's done a lot of hikes. I'm not crazy about hikes. I like them. I like a steady hike. I go for the view, you know. Yeah. It's not. It's something about that steep uphill. And she says that that's the hardest hike she's ever done in her <laughs> entire life, you know. Yeah. And I've done harder ones with her in, in San Luis Obispo, what I thought was hard. So, yeah. I didn't even know. To, to give everyone in the chat or who's listening to this, watching this, to give you an idea, that's like the steepest mountain I've ever seen. Not everyone knows that mountain, but it yeah. literally looks like a volcano, guys, where it is like yeah. straight up and – the fact that you, oh, that's a warm yeah. up to you, basically. Yeah. That's pretty much I mean, what that crazy. is to you. I mean, I've done like an eight hour road bike ride and climbed 10,000 feet. For you to do 20,000 feet on your feet is insane. Insane. Yeah. How, it's, how it's, many times did you? Oh, gosh. I don't remember. But so what I do know is that on my side, it's half a mile exactly uh-huh. from where I started to the top. On that side is uh, 7,000 or 700 feet. Okay. So in like half a mile. Mm-hmm. So it's already like yeah, more than super street. Feet. And so on the other side, uh, I believe it's like 850 or like 900 mm-hmm. and it's like 0.65. So okay. add that up. I don't remember. It was I'm not good at math. Don't ask me. Someone want to do, <laughs> someone wanna do the math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone wants to do math out there. I don't remember, but it was. That's cool. It was so what's, so here's, here's what I want to ask you actually is that out of all the runs you've done thus far, you've seen a lot of different challenges. What would you say is the hardest challenge you've done and what was it? Where was it? Tell me about it. Oh, gosh. Because you've seen a lot. You've seen a lot of action. You know, every race is different. You know, 5K can be, like, very hard. But, like, um, actually, just because you said about traveling, I did go. I was lucky enough to uh, – there's this race you have to qualify for, run, like, 100K or whatever, get Mm -hmm. some points to be entered for a lottery for this one race. Lucky lucky enough, I was considered an elite. So, like, I kind of bypassed the lottery, and I was gotcha. you know, officially in. So it was really okay. cool. I was like, oh, shit. Like, uh, they made a mistake or whatever, but I don't care. <laughs> they made um, a mistake. But, um, you know, um, I got to go to France. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, with, to run 100K not last or two August ago. Or, yeah, 2019, whatever. Gotcha. Before and, um, COVID? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Before COVID. And uh, I was out there. It was really cool because I got to share that experience with a friend, Maddie. Shout out to Maddie if she's watching this. Love all the uh, shout outs. Bring Maddie. all the shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we were both fortunate enough to, to get in um, and run this crazy, crazy race. Probably one of the hardest races. I mean, I know the hardest race I've done in the longest time I've actually been out there. So I think it was like 16 hours. 
Straight, nonstop, and, and or like forty minutes. Well, like stops where they have these things called H stations. This is actually kind of funny because France is a little different. Mm -hmm. So, H stations. Do you do you know what H stations are? Just because you do mountain biking or anything? Uh, like that? I mean, we call it pits, but okay. it's probably a similar thing. Where they have like food and stuff like that, yeah. or drinks or something. Yeah, we so don't you want to check up have on that. Well, in like some of the bigger like the enduro races, I said like the eight hour days. Yeah, yeah. They have like well, we have the fuel, so yeah. we have fuel stops, okay. and at the stops they'll have like they have water and like watermelon like that kind of yeah. food like energy food so, and, and then you yeah. get back out there, and then right? you have like a 10 minute break and then you keep going so here they have eight stations like for runs you go they have like little you know candy or you know like jelly beans or mm. like uh potato chips you know for you know electrolyte drinks and stuff like that yeah okay so now when you're in france it's a little different they have these eight stations um where they have like salami, they have cheese, oh, they even have wine at some what? stations. It's like <laughs> as a pit like, stop, like you think yeah, it's like this is a, you know. But I'm not sure if it's because they're kidding or or whatever. But they're trying people, to mess with yeah, Americans people, but, like you. you know, I like, <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? I'm out here. I'm, why not enjoy it? So I'm taking like handfuls of like cheese and salami and all. This guy's in the stuff. middle of this massive <laughs> run that he traveled halfway across the world for. Oh, let me get a glass of wine. Might as well yeah, while, yeah. while you're there, right? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but this thing is like just steep. So because you know of distances and like you know how mm -hmm. vert you know yeah. can 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 be a part of a race. Um, so this race is like sixty two miles or so, sixty sixty two miles. I don't remember. And then it had uh twenty thousand feet of vert. Okay, which is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Okay, and these these guys don't mess around. Like here in the states, we have like switchbacks. You know, mm -hmm. kind of take your time. These guys aren't yeah. fucking around. It's straight up, and you're just the beginning of the race was just a climb to the mm -hmm. top, and it's like again. That was a race because I'm, you know, I'm traveling internationally. I was like, you know what? I'm never going to make, I'm, I'm not sure when I'm going to be out here again. So like I made sure to stop and just take it in. Cause it was freaking sure. beautiful. Out of the, out of the whole, out of the entire race, I only got one picture and it was like a panoramic view of like some storm, like off in the distance. And they have all these. Did like, you post it on your Instagram? Was I don't think I ever did. No, I don't okay. think I, that was just kind of like for me, I guess. Sure. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was. It was really cool just yeah. being out there. But. I think we got to put in perspective how gnarly 2,000 feet in, or 20,000 feet in 60 miles is. Like, so I did a road bike ride one time, started at my house in San Jose, rode up and over the Santa Cruz Mountains in Aptos, rode to Santa Cruz, and then up and over those mountains into Saratoga and back home. It was like 107 miles or something, and that was 10,000 feet. So going up and over the Santa Cruz Mountains twice was 10,000 feet in 100 miles. So you imagine twice the elevation Double, yeah. and almost half the distance. distance like that's super steep that's yeah. crazy but again on your feet too yes. it's like it's that, that's a, that's a no, whole another yeah step. see I, on my downhills i got to coast and take a break because i was on a bike you got there's no real breaks for you yeah like that's it's super now impressive. my knees were really hurting like towards the end of the race for sure and um you know, I really, so like I said, I, I got, went out there with my, you know, friend Maddie and, and her family is really nice. We got to stay in this place and I'm so grateful for them to be honest. I yeah. love them, their family anyway. Sure. Um, and, um, so we started this race and we're like, so her, you know, uh, it's her, I think it was her fiance. Anyway, her husband now and her, her family, mom and dad were out there and they were going to crew us. And so it's like, okay, do you know how fast we're going to be going? I said, you know, I don't really know, you know, no one really knows how fast they're going to go, but they're trying right. to crew both of us. And then little by little, there started to be a gap during the race. It's like, oh, shit. So, okay. So now her husband's crewing me, and then they're crewing her. So mm -hmm. checking up on me and all this stuff. You know, and you're out there super late, too, you know. So thanks for, to them. Real quick, for running dummies, crewing is kind of like your partner, right? Yeah, like Are a, you paired up with someone? Uh, is that normal? Someone who, like, at, a chase at, the, team. At, the cha at the checkpoints, you have, like, families there. So, like, like at checkpoints, it's like, hey, is everything cool? Is something yeah. I can grab you? It's like a chase team. That, do you need any support during the race? Yeah. Which is really cool, you know, seeing a familiar face out there felt good the entire way. Anyway, so there ended up being this pretty big gap between us. So then they had to split. And um, what was I coming on about this? Uh, you had asked. I was talking to you. I was talking to you about uh, as far as the the crews. Oh, you yeah, were saying yeah. crewing up, and then you were saying you started to get gaps in between each yeah, other, yeah. right? Oh uh, yeah. So they. So anyway. Um, the, yeah. So there were there were these gaps between me and her. I kept wanting to check up on her, you know, because I was like, oh, how's she doing? Because I want to know. I want to mm -hmm. know. I wonder if we're gonna finish around the same time. And then I was like, oh shit, it's apparent that's gonna be like a later thing. Anyway again these mountains are up you know it actually so this race you you hit three borders so it's switzerland swiss alps and then uh in italy you hit some you know the border there and then you come down and finish up in france and um in chamonix but i remember i thought i was i was beat up you know i talked to a few people yeah. i was beat up it was like the last like 
like five miles of the race and it's like steep it's technical it's dark you know you have this headlamp on you're like fuck i'm a little tired not you know it's like what's going on yeah and I can only um, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and then um so actually one of the things just so you guys know having coca-cola is like the best stuff to have which is kind of yeah. opposite it's like you know if this guy's Wait, into health or whatever you're, you're bad, telling me coca-cola uh, like, like a soda, like yeah, a Coke. Yeah, soda, yeah. And you're saying it, what, what, what makes it like so good? The what? caffeine and the sugar, it's like jet fuel, man. It's crazy. It's like a drug. It's like you just take it and you're like, oh, huh. like you have superpowers again. So, That's a trip. I so, did not know so that. So I started to feel really tired. I had it like at the last checkpoint before the finish. And I'm and I'm, I'm like, oh, man, I, I'm feeling not so good. And I'm going this downhill and everyone's kind of passing me up now. And then something like kicked in in here i don't know what it was and i hope maybe you maybe you guys have experienced it or not i don't know but it just started getting very emotional mm-hmm. like it's like maybe because i was out there and i was thinking about wow like i can't believe i'm doing this right now i was just overwhelmed with all these emotions i started just bawling and then i had all this energy and everyone had passed me up you know i was just passing up and i'm sobbing and i'm like kind of like laughing and i'm like oh my god <laughs> was and it I'm like just, a, you don't know why you're like, crying no, or it's what just, no it's, i don't it it's like, like a i've i've reached it one time <laughs> in my life i i didn't start crying but it's like a point of like hallucinogenic like you're just so out of it like all emotions are flowing through yeah. you that's, that's interesting the day it's, when i did my ten thousand calorie day yeah yeah it was like hour 17 you know it was like eight o'clock at night Damn. i started at four in the morning yeah you know and it was like eight o'clock at night and like it had gotten to the point where I'd done over a hundred miles of bike riding, like 13 miles of running. Like I was done. And like the last thing I could do was just walk like, and I, and my mom was with me and it was like nine o'clock at night, like dark. And I'm literally just toast. Like candy. I'm, I'm walking like I'm, pro- people probably thought I was like a zombie or something. <laughs> I was, I couldn't even keep my eyes open and I was just walking, like just knowing, okay, I got three more hours till midnight. Yeah, I, yeah. I can get these last couple hundred calories. And I was just, I wasn't crying, but I was just like, so <laughs> it's okay, man. Hey, it's like, all good. It was just like, I, I had all these different like emotions and I was like, so ready to just give up. But like, I knew I had to do yeah. it. And I was just like a lifeless body. Like I couldn't control my mind. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I could, I could understand that. Yeah. But I mean, obviously there's a little bit more passion yeah, You're going was... in a race. It's a little different, I think. And it's like, like, it's not like I was like winning or anything, you know, it was just like the, again, the last three miles after running that distance, I was like. It was, there were the fastest miles I had hit throughout mm-hmm. the course. It was like, like seven, like six, you know, six minute miles, seven mm-hmm. minute miles. You know, it's like after doing all the stuff that I had done and it's just like, I come to the finish and I'm sprinting and I'm still sobbing. And it was just all this emotion and you cross the finish line and it's like, wow, I can't believe I completed this. And then like, no one's really there because it's like 2 a.m. Yeah. or something <laughs> like that. It, yeah. But there's still the announcer still out there and it's pretty cool. And I have my, you know, my friend Colin also, if you're watching Colin shout out to you um but it was it was just really cool to just you know seeing a familiar face and at the finish unfortunately my wife didn't you know couldn't come because you know it's teaching right your own sure schedule yeah and stuff like imagine. that so yeah but it was just fun to just yeah anyway you tell that, that was good. the hardest race and like the best race I yeah have ever R- racing is just done. so cool like yeah. what's well, what's cool is that you can it's it's nice having you here shane yeah. because you could totally relate while it's a different spectrum of racing you can get mm-hmm. it like to me yeah. i I'm clueless. Yeah, I'm sports. I play football. I get baseball. Whatever. All the other, you know, typical sports. You know, yeah. This is a whole different aspect of sports, you know, <laughs> that I can't relate. So it's so cool hearing that. And even one of our viewers mentioned it's kind of funny. I, I only reason why I bring it up because it made me laugh because passing people in the final push – uh, in your hat, your your twirly hat, <laughs> bawling his eyes out must have been a sight to see and tough to get passed by. So you're uh, passing people, crying your bald uh, eyes out, the well, hat spinning. Actually, <laughs> shit. Actually, unfortunately, I forgot the hat. For oh, that no. oh man, man, that would really added wanted, to it I even really more. I wanted to take it, but it would have been really funny seeing this. See, it was funny yeah, thing that's to see. Cool, but. man. So, someone I want to ask but, you too is uh is uh being a I'm gonna assume not. To an extent, being you know as regular as you run, but for someone like myself, or you know even how maybe even chain, we go for a run, you know, and you run a couple of days in a row, or you go for a hard run, you get shin splints, right? Or me, mm-hmm. I never had a knee yeah. injury, and my knees will get tight, you know. Yeah. Do you experience any of that where it limits you? Because that's like the common thing with yeah. running, right? I used to. I I mean, like again, I would always, although I've had all this experience, I still would run stupid, mm-hmm. like. It's like, oh, what does yeah. that mean? Well, well, running stupid would be like, you have to have easy days. So they say about, I think it's like, I could be wrong, but it's like 15, like 20% of your runs should only be the hard part. Everything else should be easy. 
Hmm. Now I would always do like half and half Mm -hmm. and it was like totally wrong. It was like, I was always going fast. I wanted like quick results. And even after like slowing down, I was still very stubborn. It's like, Oh, I still feel good. Let me go faster after this workout. You know what I mean? Right. So at first there were a whole bunch of injuries, especially when I started was, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but like the, uh, less is more like the minimalist stuff, like the five finger toe stuff. Like that was pretty big when I first started running. So like, I was like, Oh, I may have to go, you know, zero drop and then yeah. that's where all the injuries started after that and i got better got some better shoes but then still training would happen i'd have chin splints and all those other stuff so here's my question you mentioned right at the start you talk about an easy day hard day whatever i feel like that's subjective i feel like so, to you an easy day okay. so, so tell yeah, me what, what is, what is that yeah. like? what's an easy day <laughs> well, to you and what's a hard day okay to you? well so i mean it's gonna sound a little crazy because maybe you guys don't run as much mm-hmm. you know what i mean or run not at, all. Not at all. Not at all. We're going to be honest here. Not <laughs> at all. Used to. Like, Used to. Yeah. I, I do want to get back into it. But it's it, like, um, it's, it's a typical day for me. Uh, now, Mondays have been rest. Tuesdays, it's just like, you know, easy run. So, what is for, that? For me personally, an easy run is just like, if you can keep a conversation, that's how it should be. So, if you keep a conversation, then that's how you should be running. That's an easy run. Does a destiny, so, like a, a distance, go into that too? De- like, depends, too far, too de- short? It depends on what your goal is. Mm-hmm. So, like, some people set like to do 80 mile weeks or like 50 mile weeks or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, right now, I'm kind of like 50, 55, kind of just hanging out there. But, like, um, so like Mon- uh, Monday's day off, Tuesday would be like, you know, eight miles. You know, easy with maybe some strides. You know, kind of just pickups for like twenty seconds. Yeah. Or something. Sure. Wednesdays are like today. Today are like hard workout. Today was a pretty hard workout. It was actually a lot of fun. Kind of suffering out there. Yeah. It was really cool. Um. So that would typically be like you, that's where you want to build your speed. And it's only for like today. They my coach called it the power half hour or something like that. Power power of half hour or something like that. Half hour <laughs> of power. Anyway, yeah. and then it'd be like easy run on Thursday, uh, and that's like six to eight miles. Easy run on Friday, same thing, six to eight miles. And then Saturday, you have like a long run. It could be 12 to like 14 miles, depending on what your goal is. And then you, you hit like certain speeds during – so or, I don't know. <laughs> what's funny is it and and no knocks to you, it makes sense. You put the word easy on it. Like to hear those numbers <laughs> with the word easy is is laughable. To me, you know, <laughs> to you it makes sense. So let me ask you this tying into that is for someone who let's say is just starting like for me, I have not run probably since I played football. Realistically, mm-hmm. let's be honest here. <laughs> you know, I might get the occasional one day in the past months workout in, you know. What would you suggest for someone getting into it? How do they condition themselves? Do I've heard things like you go one mile at a week, you know, mm. go for a one mile run. Okay, next week, try and shoot for two miles and up and up, yeah. you know, kind of. What would you suggest for someone getting into it? I would say start off with hikes, uh, maybe occasional run here and there a couple times a week, maybe a couple of miles. Mm-hmm. Now, I think what happens is a lot of times we have this image of like when you see a video of someone running, you see them like, like oh, shit, they're running fast. They're mm-hmm. running really cool. And that's what running looks like to us. Right. You know, it's to some people. I mean, I did for me when I first started, I was like, Oh, I got to look like that person because they're running hella fast. Right. <laughs> but that's not necessarily it. It's like, it's, so you got to go slow and you kind of just build up to it. You kind of just be patient with it. And I think a lot of times you can kind of like, you can say that just about, about a lot of things. If you're not patient with it, then you just burn out and stop doing it. So like, for instance, like new year's resolutions, right? People like, crazy diet right away burn themselves yeah. out and then it's like, i'm one of those people and over <laughs> yeah but it's like it's all about just being patient there's patient there's a song, moderation huh it's, yeah there's a there's a song by like black star which is most deaf and talib quali and it says uh uh how do you, I, I could be wrong but it's like um how do you have high expectations when you have no patience and it's hmm. like i feel like you should always have the patience to do something like that like if you have a goal just be patient about it it will all be all right at the end so but anyway yeah easy days Easy days, just doing like a, um, you know, a couple mile runs here and there. Easy. Like yeah. if you can keep a conversation, that's the way to do it. And even just building up to it. So like run, walk, run, walk, run, walk. And being gotcha. okay with doing that. Is it is it kind of a stereotype stigma? I feel like there's so many stereotypes with running that I think about, you know. Like one thing I hear is like, oh, if you're going for a run, don't stop. Like once you stop, you're not going to be able to keep your pace and you're uh, going to be tired and quit early. Is that – is that personal preference? Is that, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's personal stuff. I think uh, I do have some friends that sometimes, like, for me, like, when I'm on my own, a lot of times if I'm doing a long run, I don't stop. 
I just mm-hmm. continue and just like do 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 in my head or whatever. And I do have friends sometimes that during the long run they'll stop, and it's like when I'm joining them, and it's like oh that's different. I d- I usually mm-hmm. don't stop. I just yeah. continue sure. the entire time. But it's like I'm okay with it. It's not like it bothers me or anything. It's just right. something that I notice. Right. But um, I don't think you have to you know necessarily have to keep going all the time it's no. okay to stop I, I think the biggest thing getting started and it's all mental <laughs> everything's honestly Such a mental. mental game yeah. but like yeah. i if i had to give any advice i'm like if you want to do running and you can honestly kind of take this for anything like running like i did it for biking i mean i do my streak right it's been like 590 yeah. days now like the first weeks were tough right like you know making time to go riding now it's just such a like part of my schedule yeah. like i don't even it's just second nature yeah it's like well, now that i've gotten into like I'm, ha- I'm riding no matter what today then it's like i could focus on okay i really like it now i'm gonna do those those big challenges i'm gonna go do that ten thousand feet yeah. day whatever and so it's like having an, an accountability is another thing too that's why i post on my instagram story every day and yeah. when i like there's been times where I don't have service or whatever, or like I'd post really late. Yeah. I have people messaging me like, dude, what, you're riding your bike today. <laughs> like, so like having the accountability is huge. And then just keeping the streak of like, it doesn't even matter. Like, okay, if you want to run every single day, it, you know, even if it's like a quarter mile, like if you keep the streak, connecting that streak is so much more important because like, it's just like another thing to get you going. It's yeah. like, if you're super lazy, you don't want to go on a run today. Well, I don't want to lose my streak. I'm 20 days in, you know? <laughs> so then that gets you to go out there. And then, like, I've had days where I'm like, I don't want to ride. I'm just going to ride around the neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. And I get out there, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, you know, I'm going to go. And I do like a 15 mile ride. Yeah. And it turns into like more. And I think that's cool. And then, then and it's funny just because I, I sometimes have like things where like I'll sit in the parking lot for a little bit and I'm like, do I really want to run? It's like, mm-hmm. okay. And sometimes I'll be with my wife. It's like, do you want to run? It's like, let's just try. And it's yeah. like, so we go for like, you know, it's going to be like, maybe we'll just turn around at the end of the mm-hmm. trailhead. It's like, oh shit, we feel good. We yeah. continue. So it's funny how it's like, you're at first, you're like kind of dreading it in a way. And mm-hmm. then it's like, uh, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. And then you it's, continue. It's totally true because for me, even on a, I guess we'll put the word on a casual aspect is I want to run for cardio to lose weight, yeah. you know? And for me, the hardest, and I mean so hard, I, it's ridiculous how hard it is, is getting started. It's literally yeah. getting dressed, putting on the running shoes, stretching a little bit, and then going. And once I'm going, the few, again, a few times I run, I'm not going to you know, put a front up, is once I'm going, I'm fine. You know, yeah. I, To an extent, if I have music or I like to listen to other podcasts even while I'm yeah, running, yeah, yeah. I get in a zone to an extent where I can go and it's not fast, it's just steady, you know? But the hard, it's ridiculous how, again, mental, like so many other things in our day-to-day lives where it's mental. It's yeah. so hard to actually make yourself mm-hmm. do it, put action to it, you know? You know, that's why well, you go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, there's this meme that I saw and it was like, uh, trail runners. And it was like someone who was really excited. It's like, this is, this is going out for an eight mile or eight hour run mm-hmm. somewhere on a trail, super technical or whatever. And then, and it showed another picture of doing a task or trying to do a task that will only take two or three minutes. Mm-hmm. And it's like them ugh, like yeah. not doing these two. And it's so funny how, like, I mean, I, I'm going to admit it, but there's times where like I can do all this stuff. And then when it comes to like a little shit, like, you know, picking something up, mm-hmm. I don't do it. <laughs> or, or if it's something I should be doing, like right now I should be digging, um, you know, our sewer system, our main line from our house. I need to dig that up. And I, been very putting, sl- it off. putting it off i'm slowly there's you know i'm digging it up but it's still something that i should just dedicate a full day well, to and i have not it, it, there's so many things you could relate that to it's like again as small as it is but the weeds for me around the yard yeah i literally it's just me <laughs> like putting again getting dressed getting out there with you know and cutting them all down and yeah. spraying it once you're going it's fine i almost yeah. enjoy it. i like being outside yeah, yeah. It, 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 it can relate to, it, relate to so <laughs> many things yeah. it's like and, I don't want to do that, bro. It's like, funny when you were talking about like things that you think of, those are some things that I think of. Mm-hmm. And I do always make an effort to try to be better about those things. So like if you ask my wife, I know you, she's, I don't know if she's on here right now. She may be, but if she were to ask, it's like there has been improvement throughout the, our time that we've been together where it's like, Oh yeah, I won't leave the shoes there. And she's really cool about it too. You know, mm-hmm. very casual. Not anyway, our relationship is like amazing. That's cool. It's really cool. Anyway, so, um, I'm so, excited about something and I, I may just mention it later at the end of the show or something. Jose, here's a good question. If you feel comfortable asking, yeah. how, how old are you? I, I, uh, I feel like this 20, 29, I'm 29 years old. Jeez. You, I, I'm <laughs> not going to kid you. Take this insult comment, but you look younger. I could have guessed that you're our age. You know, I'm 22, oh, he's 21 Ooh, turned 22. Thanks. So I mean, 
Yeah, you, you running's doing you good, apparently. Yeah, Whatever you're doing, you're doing right. You know. You know it's funny. Uh, uh, a friend, coworker, friend, coworker, um, just recently asked, like, "Hey, you know, do you ever think about like how you should act, how you should act after a certain age?" Because he's a little older than me. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't really think about that stuff, but it's like I think. I don't think there's anything you should really change. You know what I mean? No, just be older, yourself. You just be yourself yeah. and it's all good. And he yeah. was like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing, but I was just thinking about, you know. Sure, yeah. Because I think people may think about like, oh, I'm getting older. I should act a certain way or I should be doing certain things like investing all this money or, you know, getting stuff like that. Well, in More our society, that's what it all is. That's you know all I mean? that it is, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Whatever you, again, whatever you're doing, you're doing right, yeah. man. So thanks. So what I want to ask you, let's let's kind of shift gears and get away from it. Is is not only are you a runner, but you told me a little bit before is that you're getting into biking, like Shane, right? Kinda, yeah. You mentioned it earlier in the show. You're yeah. mountain biking, road bike. What it, what is that about? Both actually. Uh, well, actually, I had an injury like last year. My Achilles was mm. messed up. I think it was actually torn. Mm-hmm. because of the mil- these are actually some of the zero drop shoes the minimalist shoes i was talking about but i don't run in these mm-hmm. anyway had an injury and i picked up cycling was road riding a whole bunch like every day really got into it and then um a friend sold me his randy if you're watching this randy um uh sold me his uh his uh his uh he, he races cross okay see like i know like a that- gravel bike yeah, so I know that the bike I have is good and mm. it's for racing. I just don't know much about <laughs> it. And you know, he works at Specialized, okay. so he was like, you know, he's like, yeah. And does, it, does it have suspension on it? Yeah, front. It's a hardtail. Oh, okay, it's so probably it's an front epic suspension, then. and it's yeah, it's a uh, chisel. Chisel. Okay. Yeah. So it's it has like carbon, you know, yeah, all these yeah. things. But it but the but the frame is aluminum. But mm-hmm. he chose it to be anyway. He chose it to be that way. But I love it. It's like today, you know, I went riding, and I and I do it more for like. I guess the exercise, but just to go out there and to me, it's something about like just climbing is fun. And then the downhill is fun. Although mm-hmm. I don't really hit the downhill mm-hmm. really that hard. I actually, I'm going to show if you can see the scars here in yeah. the face. It was, I took a fall. I came down nicely and I was there with a friend mm-hmm. and it was pretty bad. Nice scene you said? It, yeah. yeah I, I was, we're cool coming stuff. down. We're from Gilroy coming up and over and I took a fall and. No, yeah. I'm, I'm that, a, that's my biggest fear. This guy took I'm me. I'm no mount- stranger. Yeah, I'm dude. no stranger to well, falls. It, clearly, look what you got hanging from you. This guy took me mountain biking once. Yeah, one time only, and I was like, you know, and I looked at it from the workout cardio perspective. It's like, yeah, a little uphill ride. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Didn't even think about for the moment the downhill. And I know how to ride a bike. I could yeah. ride on the road. You yeah. know, for a short while, I was like every middle schooler. I want to be a BMX rider. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll hop on the bike and pedal. It's no big deal. Little did I know, like. Downhill mountain biking is no joke. Yeah. I I had no idea because yeah. again I wasn't exposed to it. And he took me like, yeah, I got a bike for you. Just hop on. Or no, we rented a bike. Nah, you got a demo. For I got a demo head, bike. Yeah. Anyways, rode <laughs> down I'm and here, I. I'm here riding the brakes. Exa- oh no no no! I was gonna say I think I don't know if I had any brakes left. Those little rubber pads probably were gone. And the few times I'm lucky, I didn't even take a spill. I don't know how I did. Of course, this guy toasted me. He probably could have gone downhill back up and downhill again yeah. and i'd still be riding my way down because it's it, it's scary bro it's no yeah. joke like you gotta, yeah. gotta feel i was nice to you i took you on a pretty mellow trail <laughs> yeah the fact that you call it mellow it's to flat. me yeah no, no to me it was something else you know <laughs> you might have even done john nicholas trail off mm-hmm. of black road no it's a pretty good like cross country it's pretty okay. it's pretty for sure yeah single track Is uh it- it's it's like a kind of little bit double single okay, track. Okay. It's not quite like it's not fire road for sure. It's like a solid hiking trail, okay. and it's it's like a twelve mile climb, but it's not crazy steep. But like I'll you go out him, there. I've done like three. Is a twelve mile ride that you guys did? I or, did it. Or, it was it was a couple it was years ago. Like that, okay. yeah. Okay. It was hey, a solid ride. You'll know better sure. than me. Cool. I made it. I like the uphill. I enjoyed that. I'm uphill not saying that you're not, you know, fit. I was just oh, saying, no. like, that's because I'm not fit. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, he, he was, he was struggling. Quite... He was definitely struggling. Oh, no, I was struggling, but I did it and I enjoyed it. the uphill factor. I liked the workout, even though I had to stop a few times. I was like, yeah. God damn, it's no joke, you know? <laughs> Cause, and, but again, like any new experience, it enlightened me to a whole new respect to, you know, a sport I was not introduced to. I see myself as an athletic, sporty guy, you know? Mm. And, you know, mountain biking, I was exposed to it. And I realized, well, this is not for me, but I got a lot of respect for the people like yourself and Shane who do yeah. it, you know. Mm-hmm. It's do no you, joke. Do you guys want to see a quick picture of sure. what this looked like? Sure, yeah. yeah. Let's see it, yeah. Yeah, no, I've definitely – I mean, I love biking. Oh. I ha- I have a specialized and epic. It's a cross-country bike. I'm yeah, actually, I saw that. Actually, I'm selling it. I, I got oh, my it. goodness. I just got a glimpse of that already. Nice. 
Yeah, so yeah. that was that was just the face there. Oh my gosh! Do you care if I show no. show them? I could hold it up to the camera. She said, "Well, it's like she, I think I, actually Christy Corbacero, one of Anna Goebel's uh, teammates, same when well, my wife yeah. actually gave me that flower." Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> warn you right now for anyone who doesn't like seeing anything. It's not super super bad, but if you're you're weak of the heart or the <laughs> eye. You know, you might want to <laughs> look away for a second. So I'm gonna come to the camera real quick. I'll show you. Yeah, I actually just I got a buyer for my Epic, and I'm gonna sell that. I'm gonna oh, get a hardtail cool. because I saw. I did that cross country race, mm -mm. so I'm gonna start doing more of that. So we already mentioned one of your hobbies beyond running. You know, everyone's mm. all of our listeners probably man, this guy's just beyond athletic of many talents. <laughs> you know, well guys, uh, there's there's more. Wait, there's more. You know, oh, there's not more. only is this guy an ultra marathon runner, not only is he you know picking up mountain biking, road biking. Apparently, you're into music. I yeah, am. you mentioned when we talked on the phone, you talked about <laughs> you know listening to the Jared King episode. Yeah. Um, and talking about dude. his musical aspect and how you kind of connected with it, you know, yeah. and a lot of things ring true. So talk about music and where, where, what it is to you, you know? So, man, that's a big question. Um, kind of like exercising, you know, um, when I was younger, it was, it was like an outlet and I feel like music was always that thing. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is going to get weird or anything, but maybe by saying that it's going to get weird, but like, um, only weird if you I, make I, it weird. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so, so my, you know, my dad wasn't really around. So, but I would visit him once in a while. And this guy was like, he would play music and I would, although I was like, Oh, you jerk. But this guy, when I would listen to him, it's like, Oh, sounds very nice. So I kind of grew up around listening to my dad a little bit, playing music. Um, you know, when my sister got her, uh, you know, her boyfriend or whatever at the uh -huh. time, older sister, um, he was also musically talented. He would play the guitar. It's like, oh, that is so cool. And then yeah. I had my friend Jose, my best friend Jose, same as me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, when I would see him, you know, we're into metal like in middle school. So like just seeing him shred. So is this on electric or like yeah, an electric uh, guitar? Okay. And it was really cool. I was like, oh, man, that is so cool. And then like in middle school, I had one of my uh, uh, teachers. He wasn't actually my teacher. He was just a teacher that I would always see with, you know, with our friends because he was into metal. He gave me his, you know, uh, my first acoustic guitar. Yeah. And from there, I was kind of like hooked, although I never really took lessons and I would learn like the first chord of a song and then just say, yeah, I know that song, but I only know like the first part of a song. And then anyway, but yeah, um, that's kind of where it started. It was like an outlet. It was like I was really into metal. Sure. And then a lot of hip hop and but and it's just kind of transformed to all this other stuff. So and so you you would say now kind of it's just another outlet for you like running it's just another yeah, outlet it's to actually, this day. Yeah, so I I used to write a lot and I, again I'm not even I wouldn't even consider myself a writer. I just like writing mm -hmm. a lot. So like Right. Um re, so it's just like ways to express myself and it's and you know um I always I buy like instruments and I and I have all these things and I play music and I record it and I just do it for myself. It's not really for anyone else. It's mm -hmm. just because it brings me joy. Yeah. So it's, and I'm not sure if it's, if it is an outlet, maybe it's a creative outlet where it's like, I hear certain things. It's like, Oh, you know, how come I'm hearing this thing and I'll try to play it, play it. And then I start adding stuff to it and then it becomes a song. Is this it's, on the acoustic mainly? You play acoustic, acoustic guitar a lot? Acoustic guitar. Um, I mean the drums. I was actually in a metal band in high school. Oh no, I kidding! The drums. What was the band name? Uh, Enduring the Sun. It was Love Enduring that. That sounds like a metal That's band. That's awesome. It's really cool. The the guitar player and Ryan McNatt. He ended up being very successful. Uh, joined other like a very successful metal band. He did really really well. Anyway, kudos to him. But, yeah. You know, but it, it kind of just stopped. A you know. It kind of stopped after high school. I was also in another like more experimental with my good, good friends. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird, trippy music, I guess. Yeah. Druggy music. Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but, um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'd say it kind of is an outlet. Even just listening to it, but also creating the stuff myself is like really cool. I it's cool. To it's a creative tracks. outlet. I feel yeah. like everyone, whether they realize it or not, has a creative outlet, mm -hmm. you know? Like I could say, for me, that this is my creative outlet, yeah. what we have here, you know? And for you, it sounds like music. So everyone, whether they realize it or not, has a creative outlet to an extent. So then here's my next question talking about the guitar is, is that everyone, it, if you have experience with a guitar, right? Everyone's on different uh, spectrums. For me, I tried learning. And you might have heard me talk about it with Jerry. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, you know, I, I, I put my hands. <laughs> I could play probably three chords to uh, a Bob Seger song. And that's about it. That's as far as I get, if that. You know, I got these fat fingers. Some others can just grab the guitar and rip 18 different songs you name right off the top of your back. Oh, dang. 
if we were to put a guitar in your hands right now, <laughs> I mean, we, we got brood water in the chat right now. I don't know if you know who brood water is, no. but uh, he, he or she you is get, asking, Hey, have him play something. I don't know where you're at on that. Jose. So it's, it's funny. Uh, it's funny. Cause I think Jared might've said the same thing where I don't know any songs. Mm -hmm. I don't know any songs. Maybe yeah. like the, the beginning of something random. Uh, I, I guess I could play something, but I don't like even my, kind of e even honestly, like my own songs. A lot of times I end up forgetting them. They're all recorded, but mm -hmm. a lot of times I have to listen a lot of times. Like, right. what was that chord again? Oh yeah, it was this. What was that change? Oh yeah, it was that. But maybe it, I'll just put you on the spot. <laughs> now you don't have to say yes. I like that. You saw me ask that with Jared. And now it's becoming a trend. It seems, you know, you mentioned music and I, I'm a man of music. I wish I could play. I yeah. love music of all, you yeah. know, aspects and whatnot. And so I, I had to ask, yeah. but, more so joke than anything. It's so it's so neat that you have that ability to do what you do and yeah. that, the outlet that it is to you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Shane, would you say you have an, a, 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 a creative outlet? Yeah, Shane. Now I put you on the spot here, here but you know I, I was trying I to think. I don't know. I I wouldn't even say it's creative. I just like working on stuff. Like I got a moped right now. I'm yeah. fixing up and like constantly working on my dirt bike. That's, that, that's not really creative, but it's just it. like now it's, I'm, just, it's like I'm working, right? And, like I'm, and it's practical. It's something. Yeah, it's something I have to do, at least for the like, racing aspect. Yeah. And, and then like music, it's not like I can do something with it. It's only mm -hmm. it brings me joy, but yeah. or pleasure, I guess, in here. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like cool, but I'm you know you like it's kind of like a gearhead thing. Yeah. I'm just well, and I would say handy. I don't yeah. think you're giving yourself enough credit. I would call that a creative outlet. While it's different from some other outlets, but you know, I would say it is because. Different strokes for different folks, right? Yeah. You know, you got I mean, a two-stroke, a four-stroke. I mean, you, <laughs> yeah. it, you got it, right? Yeah. Um, so, Jose, I want to ask you here. And another thing we mentioned, and it's not often you meet many people to do this, but you mentioned you got a bone marrow transplant. Or, sorry, you donated to a bone marrow transplant? Yeah, I did. This was two that, That's no joke. That's not, <laughs> not, that's not just something small. So, tell me about that. That's... I was actually like a week or two after I got back from France. So I had asked them. So they had notified me. I signed up for this thing, Be The Match, like, oh, gosh, uh, like 10, 11 years ago. Downtown San Jose, there was this Asian market thing, this festival. I went. I was like, yeah, I'll, if, I, if I match, I'll do it. And um, they notified me like early 2019. And uh, they're like, hey, you may be a match. Just letting you know, are you still open? I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Hmm. Without hesitation, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm up for the experience. <laughs> yeah. And so we kept, you know, and then they're like, okay, so you are a match. We, can we take some blood work and all this stuff? And I was like, yeah, sure. And, you know, kind of just, it was this thing. But I was like, oh, no, when do they need it? And they were like, it may be, like, it, it, it may be around France that when I was going to be in France. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I, I can't do you then. It's like, if you guys right. can just do it after that because I can't do it before because it takes time to recover from that stuff. And so luckily, I, you know, they were like, yeah, we can do it when you come back from France. And I never got to meet the person, but it was a kid. I guess it was like uh, like a nine-year-old or 12. Yeah, nine-year-old kid, a boy. Never got to meet him or anything like that. But it That's was, a bummer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all good. Yeah. But it was like um, I remember – getting ready for it i thought oh shit i wonder how this is gonna be were you, you nervous know? at all like yeah a little bit i was drugged and i joked around my wife was there it was uh it was where was it minnesota yeah it was minnesota oh, wow. where i want to go get it but um you know there's this picture i'm gonna show the instagram where i'm like this on, uh -huh. the, on the bed and i and have <laughs> I my kid i'm about. messing around and you know they inject something they're like hey you're gonna feel really funny and you're not gonna know anything mm -hmm. what's going on and i was like oh okay and um as soon as they slipped his IV, I start feeling funny and I tell my wife to take a picture of me and that's all I remember. Yeah. And I kind of start waking up. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And yeah. Then, and it's three hours later. And these guys, yeah. And these guys are like laughing, mm -hmm. like the doctor and all that. And I was like, well, it's like, oh, you, do you remember anything you were saying? I said, no. It's yeah. Like, Cause okay. you just woke yeah. up. You've actually been awake yeah. for the last two hours. They've been asking me all these I just questions. Had, like, what the hell did I yeah. say? I just, oh, shit. I just pulled it up on the stream. They should be able to see it here in okay. the background. <laughs> But that's the picture you're talking yeah, about, yeah, right? And so that's yeah. right before the surgery? Yeah, that was right before. Gotcha. Surgery <laughs> is actually kind of enjoyable. <laughs> like, I, I just had surgery number seven on Friday oh, for shit. my collarbone. I I like the process. Obviously, I don't like the injury that got me there and yeah, all the, yeah. and the healing process and the pain of it. But like, going to the hospital, like, relaxing. And, like, this time, was it was pretty cool. I always like to... I like to be the easiest patient I can possibly be because I've seen, like just hell patients like coming in yeah. screaming crying kicking like 
being the worst person they could ever be when people are trying to help them. Yeah. So I, I try to be the like the angel, Mellow, like, like, it's like okay, super cool, cool easy going, like the whatever. Ideal. Wait, did yeah. you say you and then angel in the same sentence? Yeah, I don't know if I could pair. For that. sure, I don't come think on it's now. Possible. Can you confirm this? Yeah, live audience. <laughs> yeah, in the back. my girlfriend yeah. confirms. We're good. So, so what I want to ask you is, is because it, it's very far and few in between people experience something like mm-hmm. that as a, a bone marrow, tra- whether you're receiving or giving. You know, yeah. what is that like? Tell for people that don't even know what a bone marrow transplant is. Tell me what that is and what well, that's like for you. For me, well, I know that. Well, what it is, the extract. You know, I think it's the obviously the bone marrow, but it's this plasma stuff, and they inject it into someone else to help them. Um, if they, you know, if they have cancer, certain stages of cancer uh-huh. to help them out through that. Um, but, um, so what was it for me? I think yeah. it was just like, I feel, you know, if it's going to grow back <laughs> kind of like hair, if, it, if I had asked him, are there any long-term complications? They said, no, I mean, it just takes a little while to recover. And I said, cool. So if anything is like that, I'm willing to do whatever. So like if, you know, like donating blood or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, something well, that comes you know, back, something you'll that be comes fine. Back, then I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to check. Yeah. It's like, yeah, sure. If someone needs it to survive, I'll do that. But, and so that was the same thing where I was like, yeah, I'll do it because I'm not going to die from it. It's not going to have a long-term effect where I can't run or something. Right. And so. What was the recovery time? How long were you laid up? Well, it was supposed to be like two weeks. But I'm stubborn and wanted to run, and it was maybe like five days of just complete rest, and then five days. Yeah, yeah. and then and then I was out running again, I, I've, and then I've I, been I, there. I had to lie to my wife. I was like, oh yeah, no, I just went for a walk, but it was like a six mile run. It's like <laughs> you just can't. Help yeah, yourself. yeah. I was like, I just gotta go out there and just get some I, miles. I've, in. I've jumped to the gun on like timing before. Like my my favorite one was actually the doctor that did my surgery on my collarbone. I he's done four of my surgeries now. And so when four I, out of wait, four out of how many? Seven. You send them Christmas cards now. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Not as well at that point. Yeah. So anyway, so I I tore my uh, MC, my MCL on my knee, um, racing motocross, and um, I went and I it, we didn't you know the scans everything it was it was not fully torn so it was able to self heal I didn't have to get surgery fortunately but I still had some downtime I was like okay like it's like how long do I have to wait. He's like, you know, six weeks probably. It's always like six to eight weeks. Yeah. I'm like, well, I have a race next weekend <laughs> that I really want to do. And he literally, like, it's my favorite thing. He's like, as your doctor, you need to rest, go home, off the bike for six weeks. As your friend, <laughs> maybe take like four Advil, <laughs> tighten your knee brace up a lot. Yeah. And like, it's going to hurt. But you, like, he's like, you won't make it any worse. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. So like, I took like four Advil oh, before the race. Yeah. I tied my knee brace down to where I couldn't even like bend my leg. Oh, I pretty much raced with like One a straight leg. leg and I got second. Like, you know, I'm like, all right, it works Heck for yeah. me. It definitely hurt, but I've done a couple of times like that. Where yeah. It seems, I mean, I, I, again, to another aspect, I can't relate to you guys. The only surgery, and I put quotes around it, I can relate to is wisdom teeth. And I don't <laughs> even know if I could put that in the same category. I actually didn't even count that. If yeah. I count that, that's eight. <laughs> Exactly. Luckily, yeah. I haven't broken anything. I've only, you know. Sure. I mean, but bone so marrow like, is no joke. While it's your choice, yeah. you know, and yeah, that yeah. it's it's safe to say from what you mentioned earlier about raising and what you do and whatnot um, for this nonprofit and a bone marrow transplant yourself. Like, <laughs> the you're the incision player. alone is like pretty like for this like the bone doesn't even hurt anymore. It was like just the incision. Like they're cutting you yeah, open like yeah. that. It's tender for a few days. Like yeah. my first couple of days, like it hurt. Something touches it. You know, no it's joke. it's yeah. brutal. So it's. I, that's pretty cool that the bone marrow thing is. Yeah. And so my friend valorant. actually, my friend got married. My friend Maddie, who the one who I went to France, uh, France with, uh, she ended up getting married like that same week. So, like, you know, while they're all dancing, having fun, I was just kind of just watching and couldn't dance at all. Couldn't even drink. That's a bummer. They said, don't drink. Can't even drink. And don't dance. It's like, oh, <laughs> shit, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, what am I supposed to do with myself? Yeah. But it was all good. One thing I wanted to ask is now that you're getting into biking and you do the ultra marathons, have you considered like triathlons at all? No, no. Too much time, I think. Mm-hmm. Too much. I I don't have that much mm-hmm. time as yeah. those guys. Yeah, yeah. I've I've thought about doing like they have like the the sprint triathlons and yeah, stuff and, like yeah, yeah. and Capitola yeah. and stuff. So right. I thought about doing one of those, but I, my, my I have such a weakness swimming. in swimming. Yeah, my girlfriend, her. she's a swimmer, so like she can swim circles around me, but. I don't know. I, the the biking, no problem. The running, I yeah. can get by yeah, pretty yeah, well. Yeah. The swimming, 
I don't know, man. That's like what's kind of held me off from doing it, even like a sprint triathlon or something. Yeah. But I've definitely wanted to do it. Yeah, there's these things called duathlons where it's you ride, run, ride. Mm -hmm. And those are interesting to me. It's yeah. like, okay, no swimming. I'll yeah, that, that, I'll, I'll that's that something I've looked into too. Uh, I think once I heal up, and of course, COVID, I actually was like full on going to do a triathlon last year and then uh -huh. COVID shut anything down. I was like, perfect. Like that's why <laughs> that was my sign to give up on it. Well, but I guess the, I won't do it. The biking and running. I, I think that's something I'll probably want to do in the near future. Yeah. So as we wrap things up, since we're a live feed here, um, we take questions from anyone if they have anything for yeah. our guests. So first from story 81 says, what's up? <laughs> and then followed by that. They, hey. yeah, <laughs> and then they ask, uh, how much water do you drink in a day? Hashtag drink more water. That's, uh, that's my a good friend question. Sil that's my friend Silvino. Gotcha. His hashtag is uh, a gallon of water. Anyway, I feel like it's a good question to ask <laughs> you though. As much cardio as you do, how much you know you what? Say to be day? honest, I I probably should be drinking more. Um, quick story. I'm not sure how much time. No, no, no we're no, good. No, 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 uh, no time limit. But it's uh, it's uh, there is this uh. So I challenge myself because I have this friend, a gallon of water. He, he drinks, I think, I'm not sure if he still does, but he, he would drink a bunch of water, like a gallon of water or something like that a day. And so I was like, you know what? I had this big old Yeti canteen. I said, you know what? I'll make it a goal to just go through this thing. Mm -hmm. I noticed I'm drinking this thing every day. I was like, okay, cool, during my runs or whatever. Um, and then I noticed I start like having diarrhea like crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the hell is going on? I can't think of anything I'm eating differently, Yeah. but I'm not thinking about this water that I'm drinking. And then, you know, finally something happened where I didn't drink a whole bunch of water and then my stool was fine. I was like, okay, what the hell? I was like, That's wait, amazing. I didn't have the water. And then, so I go and I look up diarrhea water and it's a thing mm -hmm. where if you consume too much water than you're supposed to, or than you, than you normally do, you, you get diarrhea it starts breaking down proteins it actually is very bad for you it's that's like oh so that's what was going on so then so how much were you drinking then you have to do i was like i don't i don't even remember how much it was it was just big ass canteen and i was just drinking it every day which is it, more than a gallon yeah no no it was about a gallon but i'm asking would you drink more than a gallon would oh you drink yeah more i think than i was drinking it was two of those it was it was less than a gallon <laughs> but it was like two of those that i was kind of going through <laughs> I, I can't imagine drinking a gallon like a gallon would be a struggle i, mean, I was day. peeing a lot and yeah. then i was just it's, it's funny too as we're talking about this Jose and I are both drinking water, and Tyler's drank two beers. I had the to five. They're pretty good. I do have to pee though, so I mean, but no. So that, the catheter is yeah. coming up. Exactly. So when you like when you're racing, are you doing straight water? Or are you doing like no? High, okay, like so like mixes. That's where and I stuff? say the, the Coca Cola that I mentioned earlier. Mm. Like having soda during the race, and I don't carry this stuff with me, but it's like something at these aid stations. They'll have Coca Cola or something mm. like that, like a soda, something sweet, electrolyte, you know, mix. Yeah. Sometimes I carry powders. Usually the stuff that I carry is mixed with something else. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you need that stuff. You, yeah. your body needs it. Because if it's just water, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, shit. When I do it's, big it's, rides, no. I'll do like, I'll have like, if I have two bottles on my bike, I'll have one just straight water and one full of electrolyte mix. Because yeah. yeah. it's glad. like worth like three water bottles worth of water. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up too. You guys circled back to that. Because actually my buddy commented in here while we were talking. He's in the Marines and they do a ton of hikes and you know whatever and he uh it was when you were talking about the coca-cola you mentioned the coca-cola yeah. earlier he goes that sugar rush is a real thing though when we do uh our 20k plus hikes we usually pack a little bag of gummies or candy because it gives a huge energy boost out of yeah. nowhere hell yeah yeah it like, helps when you bonk rock, like yeah, getting out of the bonk, bonk is yeah, crazy it's like oh i got superpowers yeah that's so funny. I never would imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever experienced bonk? No, I, that's foreign oh, to me. I oh, dude, it's like is. one of the most brutal things. <laughs> what is Hell that? Yeah, you just it's flatlining you, you, or what? Yeah, you just like, yeah. you're going good, you're going good, and then you just lose all your energy, and you're basically just like ready to quit. Like Zombie. Huh. That happened you're to zombie. me you're... when I went up and over San Andreas Mountains twice. On the way up, I was almost at the top of a uh, skyline, and I just bonked crazy hard, and it was actually the record day, hottest day of the year. It was 108 degrees <laughs> minimum all day. I think it got up to like 110. Like it was so brutally hot oh, all shit. day. Yeah. My first marathon, Long Beach Marathon 2012, um, I bonked super hard, hit the wall is what mm -hmm. they call it in running. I'm yeah. Sure maybe. Yeah. So it's hit the wall. I'm bonking. I bonked. I'm feeling like shit at mile 18. I'm not feeling good. I'm walking. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Someone's encouraging me to eat and drink all this stuff. And then this old lady starts passing me up like around mile <laughs> 22. Yeah. And then she's like, come on. She's like pushing me along. She's like, come on. We got to do that. I was like, okay. And I'm hurting. I cramped up. And it was really funny. So when we get to the finish, I see the finish, all these you know, crowds of people. And I go and I take off. I'm like, okay, I have this little burst of energy. But the thing is that before the race, I had to go pee and it had kind of just gone away. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I don't have to go anymore. 
as I'm approaching the finish, I cross the finish. I'm super excited. I'm like, yes, you know, celebrating. Sure. Just, it's just me. And then um, I lost complete control of my bladder, and I just start pissing myself. <laughs> You're I, I just start peeing. I'm like, what? oh, shit. And I go, and they're handing out waters, and I'm yeah. like, I grab the volunteer hands me one. I grab it, and I try to <laughs> try to you know play it like, oh, yeah, it's just water. I'm not uh, pissing yeah, myself. That's smart. That's clever. You know, but it's really hot out. I got to cool yeah, down. Hot. So, you know, that's I grab a couple funny. of those balls, pour all over myself, but I was like, oh, hopefully no one noticed. But then at yeah. the time, I was like, yeah, that's going. Who, the, who the hell cares? Someone bring a dog out here? I've had, <laughs> I've had like the opposite of where like I sweat so much throughout the day. Like like that big ride. I drank so much water, but I didn't have to pee for like hours after because I sweat it all out and it like came back. But it was funny you mentioned the old lady that came. Like being young and like healthy definitely has its advantages, but don't count out like the old people that yeah. are like crazy into training yeah, and all that sure. stuff. Like the XC race I did, like, you know, we we're coming and it was like maybe hour 45, like last 10 minutes of the race. And I look behind me and there's like some old dude that's like gotta be in his 60s. I'm 21, you know, I'm suffering and he's coming and like that was like enough for me to like, okay, head down. Like don't let the old guy pass me. But it's impressive. There's some old dudes out there yeah. that are in crazy well, shape. Well, hey, they're, they're as old as they are doing what they're doing because they've been doing it for mm-hmm. a while, right? Yeah. I can yeah. only imagine that. So. so unless we don't have any further questions here within this room and from uh, all of our viewers and listeners, um, I think we've had a fantastic episode, Shane. Again, did you? Yeah, have no, this is this is a good awesome. talk, man. Well, Jose, you've been fantastic. Cool. I'm so glad we got this opportunity to get to know you and and bring us an insight into running that I wouldn't have yeah. otherwise known. At. Sorry, ultra marathon running yeah, yeah. too. <laughs> I, I, I like that title. It has a good ring to it, you know. Um, Can I say just one thing? Yeah, go ahead. Please, yeah, no, no, please, anything, <laughs> any shout outs, any we're gonna oh, follow you. Well, okay, so you know, Mount Madonna Challenge. You know, we kind of went over that already, yes, right? Do if you guys can sign up, I'll send the link over if you can. Yeah, put it down I, yeah, we'll, we'll put the cool. link in the YouTube description. There is that the right now. My heart is like racing, so um, I've been holding in. Uh, we've been holding in a secret for for a long time. Uh, my wife and I. And uh, she's currently pregnant, so she's uh, what? she's three. She's just over her first right. hey, trimester. Hey, so nice. Let's go. Let's clap it up. Huh? I can't really clap, but I'll try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations! Yeah. And that happened uh, today. We got the okay. She, you know, I was like, check the email. Is everything good? All the tests come back already. She's like, no, 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 no. Finally, all the tests come come back positive. Everything's good to That's go. That's awesome. She oh, sent me a message dude. today. She oh, said man. she goes and she boy. says. You can tell anyone. I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, I get to say it on the podcast. Hey, it's kind of fun. Yeah, awesome, Dad. Let's go, man. Little That's runner, awesome. little, yeah, runner yeah, little, yeah, little runner in training. That, do you know sure. if it's boy or girl? I do know what it is. I'm not sure if I should say. It's nah, keep it a secret. <laughs> keep it a secret. <laughs> it's up to you. I just had to ask. I, I spilled yeah. a beans to my mom by accident. By I was accident. like, oh shit, I said it. And she just started laughing. I will say, I don't know how he did it, but my dad called it. He texted me earlier saying, I bet he's pregnant. Like, I bet they're having a kid. What? He could, before you even said it, he's like, I bet they're having a baby. Huh? I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, that's my dad who doesn't yeah, even know you. you but know. That was a good call on you. Shout, shout out Chris. Chris. Pasco Chris. Pasco Chris in the chat. So That's well, good, man. Congratulations. Well, hey, that's a hell of a way to end this thing. Yeah. I think yeah. there's no better way we could end it, that, Jose. So I thank you for sharing that. Congratulations for again. Sure. And, Best of luck with everything you do going forth. I'm excited yeah, to see. You. I follow you on Instagram now, yeah, so yeah, see yeah. what you do. And maybe uh, in a couple months, we'll have a, an update. Maybe you could bring the baby on. Yeah, yeah no, the baby no, and tell we'll, us. Well, I'm looking forward to doing the, our post-race recap podcast after Tyler and I do your race. Yeah. So um, that'll <laughs> be, be fun. fun to look forward to. Exactly. Maybe we'll have a friendly bet between Tyler and I. Who gets the faster time? Yeah. I'm yeah. betting on you already. Hey, <laughs> broken arm or not, I'm betting on you. I can easily say that. That'll so. be good, man. Well, yeah, let's wrap this thing up. Hey, with cool. all that being said, guys, all my listeners, all my viewers, thank you so much for being here. And as we always say, we always end the show is be a friend, tell a friend, right? Hey, if you listen, you enjoy the show and you think you got a friend, your mom, your cousin, whatever. I might enjoy it. Why don't you tell them? Send it on over, right? You know? Let them know, man. We, we, we yeah, all get traction. Know. Exactly. Let them what know. What the hell? So, again, with that being said, Shane, do you want any closing words? No, man. I mean, YouTube, drop us a like. Give us a share. You know, spread the word. And Absolutely. if uh, you got somebody you want to see on the podcast, let us know. And uh, I don't know, man. Tell somebody you love them. Yeah. Always. Always. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. Love them, hell so. yeah. So, all right, with that being said, I'm going to close this thing out, guys. Thank you so much for being here, Jose. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys. Thank you. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. Take care. Later.